Hi, welcome to Vanita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. Today we're excited to bring to you a traditional recipe, of course, but it's for homemade parchaberry jam. And here in Newfoundland and Labrador, we picked this berry in the fall of the year, sort of like into October and November, because they're fully ripe. And they're the same family as you would uh, get a cranberry, very small berries compared to those, of course. And they're delicious and sour. So if this recipe interests you and you like to know how to make this jam, stick around Always and let's get started. So pretty much this is it. This is all we need to use for this recipe. We need to use sugar, water and partridge berries. And these are frozen partridge berries that we picked last fall. I want to get rid of those because I want to get some fresh to put in there for this winter. So I got six cups of partridge berries here and again just look at them they're just tiny little sour berries but they're really juicy this time of the year. And I got two cups of granulated white sugar and just about two cups of cold water. I'm going to be using about six bottles mason jars. These are one cup bottles and this one is two and if you need to use more that's fine. So let's, let's get this to the stove top and start cooking it. So now my berries, like I was saying, they're frozen and it's six, six cups. I'm gonna leave them frozen because they're gonna be cooking in this pot anyway. Just look how bright and red they are. They were frozen for almost a year and mm -hmm. here we are making this delicious homemade partridge jam. Two cups of cold water, you could use hot water, it doesn't matter, I'm more or less saying. You're going to get this started anyway. My berries is frozen. Water's, the water is cold. We're going to get this starting to cook. When it starts to boil, time 15 minutes or so, stirring it occasionally. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to it. So when you see that your, your berry juice is starting to bubble like this, you're going to stir it occasionally and of course you can put the timer on for 15 minutes or so just to let those berries break down before we go to the next stage in this step. And over here to the side, we got our cranberries that, um, just to show you the difference in the size of these cranberries and the partridge berries. From the same family, two sour berries, but these partridge berries again is our I'm going to say traditional berry that we pick yeah. here in Newfoundland and Narbador, yeah. eh? And of course, these were picked in Portagrave, Newfoundland and Narbador, um, by the lighthouse. And I just wanted for you to see that because that's where we go to pick that's these berries. Beautiful over there, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And, and a nice place for picnicking as well, going over, spending yeah. a few hours. But now back to this uh, jam. Again, I'm just boiling this stage because my berries were frozen and the water was cold. So pretty much all I'm doing now is letting this break down before I add in the sugar. And I'll and show you. that should be what, another few minutes? Ten well, minutes, I, I'm saying let it go for 15 minutes yeah, or so okay. doing yeah. that and then we'll go into the next stage. I'm learning more every day. We're going to get you making the jam <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So now after about 15 minutes or so, and I'm giving you that number just basically so that you can stick around, occasionally stir your, your jam because you don't want for it to burn or anything on the bottom. You see that your, right now the consistency do you see is a little thick. It's starting to, because this is the juice coming out of those berries there now, and it's starting to give this a little more concentration. So that's the time when you're going to take those two cups of sugar and put into the pot and stir it in until it's all dissolved. Now at this point, you're still going to sort of babyset your pot a little, stirring occasionally. And let that start to condense a little bit more. I'm giving you another number of 15 minutes when you see it's starting to bubble again, stirring occasionally. And then 
I'll show you what mine looks like when we get to that stage. I'll do tasting in between. You would. That's okay. Remember, this is a sour berry, <laughs> right? So, oh, so I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, it's a sour berry. I'm putting two cups in because two cups is what I think I need for this jam. Um, Raymond loves this jam as well, so yeah. he, he, he likes it on his bread and his buns and stuff. But you test it. Maybe you only need one cup, maybe you need three cups, depending on how sour you like your jam. And we'll talk a little bit about that again. And you got to admit, everybody loves a nice whole jam sandwich. Absolutely right. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah. So now at this stage, you might see a little bit of foam accumulate. You can scoop that off if you want to, or just stir it back into the pot um, and let it uh, cook. Um, and another way that the elders used to do it years ago, when they get to the final stage, they're ready to bottle, they put about a teaspoon full of butter into it. That takes away the foam as well. Or just leave it there because it's not going to uh, bother the taste or anything. You can sa uh, sample this to have a little taste to see if it's, again, sweet enough for you or just the right amount of sourness. You can infuse it as well with different flavors by putting some orange zest in there. You could, if you want it spicy, you can put some ginger in there. So this is just things that you can do if you want to flavor up because it is a nice bright red jam that you might want to just play around with flavors. And you There's lots of options. It is, and definitely leave us a message letting us know mm -hmm. what you like to do different with yours. But this is pretty much all our elders used to do years ago, is just cook down the sugar and the, and the berries and let it uh, go until it gets to a nice consistency, which I'm, I'm just about there. I just want for it to boil down a little bit more and we get bottling this. And me and Raymond's gonna have a nice slice of bread with a taste of this patch I'm gonna berry. have a jammy sandwich. You're gonna have your jammy sandwich, Raymond. <laughs> you haven't gonna wait much longer. Uh. Mm. Myself and Raymond loves to listen to the pot boiling. Let it be a, a <laughs> soup, let it be our jams making, or cooking a big old jigs dinner. It just, it's such a nice sound. <laughs> I'll get him to do a little clip of that sound so you can hear it as well. But while your jam is cooking, uh, put your mason jars into a, a boiler and get them uh, sterilized and ready to scoop that jam into and then after put it back into that same pot to seal them off. Now I'm going to take the boiler off the stove and at this point I'm fine with the way uh, the jam sets afterwards but if you want it really thick you can also put a tablespoonful of uh, serdo or pictin in there if you want that to be uh, thicker when you take it off but you don't necessarily need to because when it gets into the jars and it cools down to room temperature it will be a nice spreadable jam and a nice sour jam so I'm going to reach for my pot and I'll show you what that looks like Now our jam is ready, our patcherberry jam. Let's scoop it into the jars. So now just look at this delicious homemade patcherberry jam. So this is pretty much the consistency. You don't have to panic about that. It's got that little bit of run there on it. Again, if you like pectin, you could put a little bit in there. And again, if you like flavors infused, do that as well. So now I'm just gonna scoop this into my mason jar. I'm using little jars because I like to give them away as gifts as well and this one here is about a half inch from the top of that lid. Pretty much what you need to do as well after you you've put the jam into your bottle have it that it's about half inch inch or half inch from the top of the lid and then put your top on finger tight and just put it to the side until you're ready to put it back into the hot water bath and and get it sealed 
and if you're only making a small batch of jam and you're just actually just giving it away to someone that's going to use it right away just put the lid on it and call it a day let it just come to room temperature and then you can just um i think this one goes on there then you can just not have to worry about sealing it just finger tight so that's all we need to do there so now i'm gonna fill this large one because this one it'll be mine or what i got left in it for the large one because i don't think i left myself a whole lot because I had that extra bottle there, but that's okay. So this one will be mine, or me and Raymond's, and the rest I'm going to probably give them away as gifts. So uh, put your jam in there, finger type the lid, and then get it ready to go back into the water bath, or just leave it at room temperature and let it seal like this, and uh, give it away as gifts. But if you're putting it into storage long term, definitely go through the water bath. And I'll explain that to you. And don't forget to put a date on it. Date, yeah, put on it. They use Parcherberry Jam and the date of when you got it. I usually keep it up to a year if it lasts that long, but. Um, Which it usually don't. It don't. This will be all gone today, but up to a year you can seal it properly and keep it in your pantry. Now let's just have a little taste of that jam, Raymond. That is how easy it is to make your own Parcherberry jam. And of course, this one is going to be ours, Raymond. We'll leave mm -hmm. this one. This one will be for the gifts. So now, I took some off the boiler a, a few minutes ago and just let it sit on with the berries oh, like full. And then this one here was the last of the what came out of the pot and you can see that it's set already and that's just with the sugar and uh, the berries that's all and here it is the nice parcherberry jam this is my this was my dad's favorite and my favorite jam of all times because of the sour tartness and i'm gonna have a little taste of that one raymond and i'll get yours ready here pretty fast way to go I'm sure this is one of my favorite parts of making these recipes is having a taste. And I know it is for Raymond, but he he, he waits for ease. Oh. He's very patient. Mm -hmm. mm. This is a piece of our homemade bread. Drop the bread delicious. Fill your boots. The tartness of that jam the right amount of sweetness for me i probably got it all over my teeth everywhere i can't wait to finish that slice of bread and i can't wait for you guys if you got access to the parcher berries just make this jam and if you don't have access to parcher berries of course you could make it with cranberries and just sort of pretend you're eating parcher berries i could <laughs> say that would be my bet two thumbs up and so delicious, yeah. So again, I'm not going to show how to sterilize and bottle your jams because I'll, I'll share a tutorial on there how to do it, just showing the method. But pretty much after you finger tight the, the jars, put it back into your water bath, quarter the ways, half ways up the boiler and let it boil for about five to ten minutes just to seal those jars take them out at room temperature let it come to room temperature before you label it and then put it in um, either your cold storage fridge or a cabinet and again it should last up to a year if it's sealed properly the recipe is going to be under this video either a Seymour or an arrow pointing down if you can't find it there of course you can always send us a message at bonnythekitchen at gmail.com or stop by to our website at www.bonnythekitchen.com. 
of course we always say if you want to stop by to our Facebook page yeah. because we share up and coming uh, recipes, old recipes, new recipes and of course um, viewers requests and such. So if you want um, to to check that out uh, and that's at Bonita Kitchen. Yeah. And of and just course, went to YouTube and you'll find the Well, this is that where we this, recipes. Exactly. We got over 400 plus recipes and we're celebrating our 10th year of Bonita's Kitchen on YouTube and we thank all of you for uh, joining us through that, subscribing, sharing, liking our videos and certainly commenting, sending us messages. We thank each and every one of you for that. And we're satisfied to go another 10 years if you keep on yeah liking the recipes and the shows yeah well i mean as long as we got recipes to share we will but until until then we're not going to take any more of your time we know it's precious on behalf of myself raymond and our team and from our kitchen to yours you, you have, have a, a wonderful, wonderful day, day. Yeah. Yeah. join us by the sea a journey in culinary always on Kitchen to yours. We need his kitchen. 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 Kitchen